Hey folks, it's Patrick here. Thanks for joining us to continue in walking through the book of Acts. Today we're looking at one of the most uh, difficult pieces of scripture in the book of Acts. It's a story about this, uh, this couple who sell off a piece of their land and decide they want to keep part of that money from the sale for themselves and then give the rest to the church. This is significant because the way that the book of Acts sort of starts is that everybody when they begin to follow Christ and live into this community of faith, uh, they start giving everything that they have to the community to share as a communal pool. So Ananias and Sapphira uh, decide that they're going to sort of partially play into that role. Then they come to Peter, and Peter asks them, uh, is this everything that you got from the sale of your property? And uh, Ananias, who comes alone first, says, uh, Yep, this is everything. This is everything that we got. And uh, Peter essentially confronts him in his lie uh, that it wasn't everything that the property sold for. And then Ananias drops dead. And then Sapphira, who doesn't yet know that her husband is dead, comes to Peter. And Peter says the same thing. Is this... All the money, is this everything that the property sold for? And Sapphira says, yeah, of course it is. Yeah, yeah, we, we've given the church everything we have. And uh, Peter says, well, effectively, well, your husband died for this lie, and so are you. And then she drops dead. And they carry her out and bury her. Uh, it is not a great piece of scripture. <laughs> it's certainly not encouraging for us in our walk of faith at all. It's a scary one. It's a worrying one. But there's a lot to think about in it uh, beyond just how messed up it is. So one of the reasons it is so intimidating is because of what's happening. So for um, the early Christians and for us, our fellowship, our communal faith, our participation in this journey together towards the kingdom of God, effectively takes the place of the temple. So you have to have some knowledge of the way the temple and the Ark of the Covenant and all these things play out. If you uh, were to, if we were to take some time and read through, uh, uh, starting in Exodus, going all the way forward, we would learn that uh, the temple uh, is a holy and sacred place, and because of that, it is also a dangerous place uh, for people, for anybody who's trying to uh, be close to God. If you touch it and haven't gone through the right purity rituals or whatever, uh, you would also drop dead. If you enter into the inner sanctum of the temple without having uh, prepared yourself to do so, uh, there are stories about people developing uh, leprosy and all sorts of um, things because they walked into the temple without being prepared for the holiness that existed there. And so this passage really is uh, a story about how uh, the community, the, led by Peter and the other disciples, the other apostles, um, how the, the people themselves have taken the place of this temple. And so to enter into the temple, enter into the community fellowship, through a lie brings the same kind of danger that entering into the temple without having gone through the purity rituals might have had for um, other folks. So does that, I hope that makes some sense. So basically, what happens is Ananias and Sapphira sort of game the system in their favor and they walk into the community fellowship, the new temple that's embodied by the people, and they enter into it through a lie. And a lie is a manipulation of reality and truth around our own personal goals. So when we enter into a relationship through a lie, it will never be healthy or whole because the beginning was started from 
you know, me wanting to manipulate the truth around me so that I can be uh, a part of a community in some way. It's it's always has this tinge of um, inauthenticity, hypocrisy, brokenness, and in some ways that would sort of describe why the church has continued to decline the way that it has, because there is a lot of half-truths that are wrapped up in so much of what the church is and has done, both in history and in present. And so I think it's sort of a warning story for many of us, not that we'll drop dead because uh, we don't give 100% of the sales of our property, uh, but because God takes our authentic entry into community so seriously as to think of our fellowship as the temple, the place where God resides. God resides in our fellowship, in me, in you, in us, every time we gather together. And we see that, we see glimpses of Christ and the people who sit next to us and worship with us and serve with us. And if we believe that God is truly and fully present, there are also expectations about the ways that we engage with one another. Because if we engage with one another through a lie, we simply bring about more opportunity for lies and deception, and truth becomes further and further away from being possible. So it's not an easy passage, and I'm certainly not trying to explain it away, but I hope that gives some context that the temple is shifting from being in a building and in a place to being in a people and a a gathering. And that lies, um, even if they're half-truths, still manipulate the truth around us in such a way that they benefit us and not necessarily the unfolding of the kingdom of God. And, you know, we've got to wrestle with that. Uh, I don't think you'll drop dead. I hope you won't. I I hope I won't drop dead. Lord knows all of us are guilty of telling half-truths, and certainly something we all need to work on. So anyway, um, I won't ask you to comment what half-truths you may have spoken in your past, but I will ask uh, how this passage hits you when you read the fifth chapter of Acts. uh, What feeling stirs up in you? And we can talk about that in the comments below. So please do comment below this video. Um, Please do uh, like it, share it with a friend who might be interested in a conversation about Ananias and Sapphira. And uh, until then, I will see you uh, very soon. All right, take care, y'all. Bye.